I'm an artist based in New York. I work a lot with images, but also a lot of video and moving images and printed works and sculpture. And lately I've been focused a lot on images and how images are sort of like used and moved and de decontextualized and recontextualized and how they get repurposed. At Bemis I've been working on some kind of collage assemblage pieces that explore themes at like the intersection of like pop culture and the internet, kind of like leftist ideologies like socialism and communism. Also these like theoretical texts that are related to art. They like kind of look like dream boards a little bit. They also look like conspiracy boards. The intent there is, I think visually represents sometimes how I feel when I'm like doing research or like looking at these things. Like I was just researching a home improvement episode. I was put like Mark and his friend are in this band and there's a scene where they're like standing there talking and uh, his friend Ronnie's like wearing this anarchy shirt. And I think it's really funny that there was this like 90s sitcom. Like currently I'm like diving into some pop culture sitcoms from the 90s that are popular and seeing if there's any kind of like references to like leftist ideology. And it's usually like in passing, but sometimes there's like, there's some funny and interesting things that come up. So I was born in 84. And so I really hadn't like thought about a lot of 90s stuff for the past 10 years, but now I don't know if it's like getting older and like you like remember those things. But I also feel like there's like this resurgence of kind of like all decades are showing up again. And so for me, it's mostly because like my references that I can like pull easily are from the 90s because there's just so much media that I consume during that time, right? And I wasn't like politically active then at all because I was like 13. But I feel like the 90s were like this weird, like hopeful period a little bit. I don't know, like Clinton was in office, right? And people thought he was like doing a good job and the economy was doing well. Um, so there was this like kind of like narrative that the U.S. was doing well, even though it actually wasn't. So that like representation of what those sitcoms were kind of like the values, the American values and that kind of stuff I think is interesting. As you only had like this one stream, I mean you could flip channels, but like you're not flipping channels on TGIF, you're watching TGIF. So I'm taking voice to text software from both like, Apple's like native one and then also Google has their own too and I've been using both a little bit. So I'm finding voices. I think are interesting to kind of like overdub on each of the characters from the movie. Um, and they're all based on kind of like non-English speaking countries voices. Kate, the mom in Home Alone, uh, she has the voice of Veena, which is the Indian English voice um, in Apple's kind of like speech synthesis software. So we have the $500, the pocket translator, the two first class seats, that's an upgrade from your coach. Do you think it is? But who can tell? Like, thinking about this idea of Home Alone as this like super kind of American 90s movie, kind of like white culture movie, I feel like, even though I know a lot of people who love it who are not white, um, I feel like it's like a movie that shows up a lot. Um, I have international friends who are familiar with it. And so like overdubbing on top of it with this speech to kind of like play with this idea of like English as this force in the world. And I guess overlapping with like America as a force in the world and some things about kind of like immigration and migration. So that piece was, I feel like it was more experimental than anything else I've kind of been doing here. It's kind of just like playing around with images of skies that I had found on Flickr. And there's this thing that like happens when you take a picture of a sky with your phone and it like auto like, generates this kind of whatever profile your phone puts on it. And so the skies always end up looking like these crazy like gradient blues. The clouds are always like a little bit blown out. I feel like that quality is not super connected to reality, but you're very used to seeing pictures like that because people take pictures of the sky with their phone all the time. And so I started playing with this kind of like overlay of these skies panning and then this shape kind of comes out of it. I mean, I do like the connection to kind of like images and this like really, really cliche sky thing that there's like thousands and thousands of pictures on the internet. So like you have like the image, which is mediated and then it's on these like television screens, which is mediated. And so I think as like kind of like a, an exploration into like the mediated image times like whatever, how many times I think is kind of interesting.